Hello, Kirk is here, your favorite rank one inter on the microphone, and here we have a Zarya gameplay. Playing with my friend here on the Nautilus, and we are up for some interesting video game. Um, when it comes to Zarya, Zarya is a very good pick nowadays, and if you think about playing into champions where you have to chase after, uh, Ghost makes life especially easy here. And also starts with Q, hits the wall, gets the reset, and we just kite back because I have mini aggro. I don't want to all-in onto the Amumu because I take simply too much damage. What I can do with Zaya though is you can just try to aim through these minions to get like juicy hits onto the enemy and therefore some decent poke in. If, but this is one thing that is kinda whack about AD carries currently. I made a post about this on Patreon, like state of AD carry. It is about Conqueror and Lethal Tempo. On paper, Lethal Tempo is absolutely broken, but the issue is in many cases you will not even get Lethal Tempo stacked. And with that done, or with that not done, you barely get the full benefits of that Druin. So more than often enough, you're better off if you're a spell weaving AD carry to just go with Conqueror. Because for example, on Zarya, I have multiple sources of spells I can utilize and therefore gain Conqueror a little bit faster than I gain Lethal Tempo. And with crit being as powerful as it is, I can increase the damage I do by a lot by having more AD. So it's something to just have at the back of your heads and just to remember. Nice try by the Nautilus. If the, hooks connect, if the hook connects, it's a pretty certain kill here. We was hex flashing into Narnia. We just look for some decent poke onto the Zaya. And now we have to slowly look out. Oh, now the Nunu is being spotted on the map, so we can just play however we want to, because the enemy can't really play into us. Nice flash here by him, but sadly I already used my Q earlier, so I wasn't able to get enough feathers out to go for a quick kill, and flashing after here would probably not have netted me a kill. So it's probably just better to keep my flash and just push for playthings. Amumu is back, we go for some chip damage again. If the Amumu hits, I don't even know what he's trying to do, to be honest. But Zai is so unbelievably insane as a champion. And even, like as I said, oh, oh, we have a juicy situation. We go for a quick little kill here, but we'll certainly die. So I just try to at least get a few minions. I fail to get the cannon, but the Nunu just drives by us, or drive by us. And now my Nautilus is... Uh, here to just get some free gold. As I said in an earlier video, you don't have to last hit minions as a support with a support item if it's not fully stacked. You gain the gold you would gain anyway. So there's no incentive of hitting these when nobody is around if it would mess with the wave, just so you keep that one in mind as well. Now, Phil 6 is coming around the corner, having a decent angle. I can just start a fight here, do some bad trades, bait them in. Fiddle 6 comes around, goes for a clean little kill here. Since I can just hack slash around, I just do so, and we go for a cheeky little push here again. For my first item, I will go for Bloodthirst, and I think uh, Mr. Fiddle 6 should be the one leaving now, because I don't think he should be staying here. There's no purpose for him. Um, unless he believes that, not even then, like, because he has three camps on the other side of the map, Nunu now Genki mid lane, now he's resetting after leeching some gold. What a fiend. And we take another plate, and then we leave. Maybe we get some juice, yeah, we get some good feathers onto the Amumu, but we need to be mindful, he's level 5. We saw Nunu for a brief moment earlier as well, so we have to keep all of that in mind. So now, I'm going to pick up Vampiric Zepter, and then probably another long sword. Oh no, I f oh no, I feel like RNG, I remember, okay, okay. Okay, listen, this is a very bad purchase, okay? This is not good. Buying the Crit Cloak is not a good idea. But, if you're feeling yourself, and sometimes you just have to play for the dopamine, you just go for it. Yeah, we go for a little all-in, I make sure to get the cannon, pop the ghost, run after her, and look for a potential play. Okay. Nothing happens here because you don't want to overcommit, right? Because what happens if the move presses R and then there's a direct line open between the Kai'Sa and me and then she might be able to get onto me because my Nautilus used all the spells. So this way, we got a decent chunk onto the enemy, which is fine. So I placed down my feathers so the enemy can't just instantly all in me and I have to just relocate myself into safety just in case somebody is coming around the corner. Nautilus preparing some vision up there. I try to go for another cancel on the Kaiser. I succeed and if the Amumu is now leaving lane then Kaiser will die and they will lose the tower. Kaiser went for a reset so we probably get just one plate. And then we have to ask ourselves, okay, is the enemy going for Herald or is then are they not going for Herald? We spot Amumu. We get some free lethal tempo stacks on him, do some decent damage here. Amumu pops ultimate, that's very, very good for us. And now the Kaiser also goes forward. 
They are playing a really dangerous game. We can just flash around and then they get the free kill on the Kaisa. Meanwhile, the Fiddlesticks is killing the Amumu and now we have a Nunu problem. Big damage by the Nunu ult executes the Nautilus and we have to be really careful to not take too much damage by the Nunu. Because as long as he has the ability to get close to us with anything like an auto attack into uh, into his first ability, we, we just die. He also has red buff and Fiddlestick died to red buff. We immediately reset and now we have an opportunity. We could debate running back to bot lane instantly for the tower or we back up our jungle respawning on Herald. Volibear is already doing Herald so we slowly walk towards mid lane and Mumu contests this. So this means we get this tower for free. And Kaisa, if she makes a mistake, also dies. We see her walk into the river, looking for a brief moment. Here we spot the Nunu, so I instantly ghost at her. She flashes over the wall and we get a free flash. Enemy gets Harold, so uh, the enemy makes a very interesting play here by just doing what they did at Harold. I think it's a very flippy thing. I don't think Volibear should have started anyway. And we get this tower. Enemy team is really, really sketchy for me to play. Like, it's one of these games where you pick a champion that is very difficult to be caught. Like, Ezreal would also be a possibility. But Zai is the more offensive version where the enemy just goes into you and you just blow them apart. Because you have so much damage. Uh, but still, it's not always easy with Zaya. But losing lane is borderline impossible. Like, you really need to mess up. You, you can just almost always go even. Uh, you, you might get absolute uh, pain playing against the Varus champion. But yeah. Nunu rolling in mid lane, laying down the feathers, Nautilus gets the hook out, the Nunu has to be forced to ult, we deal so much damage to him, and the Amumu is also ulting, meanwhile the Nautilus is just waltzing off into the sunset. Kaisa needs to be mindful, if she gets hit by the feathers, she might just immediately die, so she has to keep that in mind, and here I misclick, and I press the emote. If you could have guessed, uh... Obviously, obviously speaking, right? This was obviously just a bait. No, I'm just bullshitting. It was not a bait. It was absolutely terrible by me. And just by the way, if you want to support the video and you don't know how you can do this, just like the video, leave a comment. That way you will help the video reach more people. And it's a way that's super easy and most definitely just free. Nunu rolling in, we just avoid the certain death by the snowball. And we just keep a little bit of distance while continuously hitting them. The moment we get QSS, we can start playing a lot different, but we need to be still mindful. The enemy team is very CC heavy, as you see. Like, they have so many spells that just get us immediately killed. But the, Z the Kaiser just does something you should never do. Just walk up to a Zaya, which isn't isolated, and then you just immediately get blown up. So, considering this game state and the game itself, You can ask yourself the following. Do you need more raw damage or do you need more spells? If I am theoretically hitting a uh, frontline more often, I'll have more ability to gain benefits from my Navora Quick Blades having more spells. If I hit squishy champions a lot, then I'll probably have more benefit of just having Infinity Edge. Um, however, Navori in general just grants me my steroid, my second ability so much more often, and one of my massive or biggest damage tools very frequently in the form of my third ability called Blade Caller. And when comes around the corner, I have to sidestep here, I need to be a little bit mindful to not get just popped. We hit them with a few feathers, they just get blown up as you see. Champion is very cool, very nice, very high damage. One of the, like, it's, it's such a weird thing to see, right? The entire roster of AD carries is like, can they one-shot you? If yes, okay, they're good. They can't one-shot you? Ah, well, not a good thing. And now, Mr. Nautilus and I will be claiming the last standing tower on the map. Hopefully, um, the Volibear will either assist us in diving with the Fiddlesticks or reset to defend the tower. Swain is doing wonderfully well on the other side of the map. And now we can just look for a potential play. Fiddlesticks just ults in. We go from the sideways here. We pop Ghost. We spot the Kaiser. Kaiser gets nearly blown up. Flashes nicely out of danger. And we'll get the free tower here with a four-man rotation. Meanwhile, Swain also rotated up mid lane. 
Nunu also comes here around the corner. I have to instantly flash away just to make sure I don't get immediately caught. I get knocked up by the Yasuo and I'll just fall. You see, there are so many things that can kill me and it's so sketchy and so dangerous. And if I had QSS, this is not a problem. If I had QSS, I will absolutely survive. But the moment I'm tagged by, for example, the Nunu Snowball, I will be immediately knocked up and then the Yasuo will ult me and I will die in sequence of CC. If I get hit by the Amumu stun, like the bandage, I will die in the same way. So if I get touched by literally anything, I will dissipate. And therefore I need to be really careful and really mindful with the um, spells I have and use them super early. And be very um, aware of how I space. So this game is most definitely a QSS game. Because if I don't get this QSS, I don't have enough tools to survive. And it's... It's very, like, it's it's the most important thing that I don't get myself killed on cooldown. My Nautilus is beefing with the angry toilet paper. We spot the Yasuo, so we need to be a little bit mindful. Windwall is being put down. I get knocked up. I pop the ult. We just CC them. The Yasuo is dead, which means this fight is now super easy. Also, in case you didn't notice, if you hit through Yasuo Windwall, your feathers will stop in front of it. So they are not deleted. With that in mind, you can actually use this to your advantage. It's such a weird thing because they should be deleted, right? But yeah, not enough thing, not enough we can do on the map right now. So we just pick up some free items. Since I cannot complete my E, I will now uh, buy towards my BF sword. Now I have my QSS for the potential Baron fight that could be happening at any time because you know it's Wild Rift. Therefore the QSS will help me to stay safe. I will also get my normal flashback relatively soon. So now I will have all the layers of defense I desire against this type of team. And yeah, like for the people who say just go exhaust this game, I don't think exhaust does anything with the amount of threats I have on the enemy team. Um, because if anything hits me, like, if any of the CC spells hit me, I just die. And that exhaust won't help me. So I'd rather have more speed so I can just, you know, maneuver my champion in a better way. And now Kaiser just does something very interesting by going around the corner. IQS is very late and also very late. Yona comes close to me. Nice Nautilus auto attack stopping him. And I have to be really mindful, but I still die to the Yona champion. So you see, I played it very poorly and therefore I die. But the enemy is completely focusing themselves on me, literally selling the entire bloodline to kill me. I am honored at one, like on one hand, but I'm also disgusted because it's really awful to play into. Nice little U-turn. <laughs> now we have the epic fight of Mr. Nunu against the Volley Bro. But now the man with the anchor also comes around the corner. Depth charge coming through, auto attacks coming through. The Demolition Squad, the Tank Goblins. Just look at them, just tanking it up, just walking around. And I'm very close to my Infinity Edge. My team is having some interesting uh, adventures down there. So I can utilize this moment to continue pushing, hoping that my team doesn't end up dead. So just to, ooh, this ultimate can go very wrong here if he doesn't get the kill. And now we're in a very bad predicament. Like, what am I supposed to do now as an AD carry? I cannot split top side because uh, Yona kills me, probably. And I just, I guess, I just go to them. Because I cannot reliably side against the champions they have. So now, now this is going to be very, very tough. Yona ults in, makes my life substantially easier. Gets away with the E. Everything is fine, but now I have to really be careful. Look how I position myself to the right so I don't get knocked up instantly, but I still get knocked up by the sheer distance. Pop my ult to avoid the Q3. Now I will space the Amumu R because it's the only way I survive because I don't want to use QSS as of this moment, not against the Amumu only. Now the Yasuo comes around the corner. I get CC'd. I pop the QSS, but I still die. Like, how much damage and how disturbing is this that is just pain no fiddlesticks ults and he gets the look at the healing of the yasu or the wits and popping off damn and yeah now we're like hmm, 
What items do we go? I guess we just go for the Mortal Reminder. Meanwhile, my Giga Chat Volley Bro just teleported out. <laughs> he said, nope, I'm out. I'm chilling. We just give him a little uh, ping on the teleport and give him an emote just to showcase our appreciation for the Volley Bro. And now, you best believe it, the bad things are about to happen. The Baron Nasher Giga Game moment. Well, who's gonna win it here? We're gonna walk in, we're gonna look for an angle here. They are in the pit, we just go for damage, they pick up the Nasher, we just need to be still mindful of the potential incoming damage up there. We just flash over the wall, we just get knocked back in absolute depression. And yeah, the Nunu's gonna walk away and we will never catch him. Feels bad, man. They get away with murder, they pick up this disgusting purple worm. With only two people dead and we lose Fiddlesticks and Swain as well. So now this game is still very much losable. Next Dragon is also now on the map. Maybe the enemy team is making a slight mistake here as well. It's the soul for us, not that it does anything. Enemies teleporting in. We see that the Yasu is looking for an angle. We placed our control ward and now we have to pre-stack feathers in a way. The winch hitters are still alive. He goes up with the EQ. Uh, I QSS it, I survive, but now what do we do? I should walk away. I don't think I can do anything here. Cause Yona will just Q free on the mid of the mobs and just kill me. Yeah, um, yeah goodbye. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry for picking 80 carry. My bad. But I should have walked away in the first place. Now Fiddle 6 comes around the corner, gets the free kill at least one. The Kaiser will probably ult after the Fiddle 6 does do so. And now the Nautilus is on the run, escaping certain death. Also running here, as you quickly saw, he runs the Catalyst. So he has infinite mana. Unironically, I would have liked to have, uh, and honestly, no, it doesn't even, like, mounted, no, no, <laughs> no defenses would make a difference for me this game. I will still die, whatever happens. It's so sad. I could go any item and still just get one popped. And yeah, now I have to use my teammates as living wards. I'm not allowed to walk too far forward. I don't have my real flash available. I want to get my mortal reminder to increase at least my damage a tiny bit. So I'm hoping that my team doesn't do anything too stupid until I get my item. With my item, I'm going to boost my damage by a significant margin. So it's going to be a nice thing to have. And let's just pray my team is not... Uh, making some unfortunate uh, mistakes in the meantime. Because I'm not allowed to make a single mistake in a fight, and they are neither. I mean, technically speaking, they are because they have 50k HP with the exception of Fiddlesticks, but you know what I mean. So yeah, we have a slight problem. I need my item. I don't know if I can recall here. It's not possible. I sadly have to stay now, so I didn't get my item pre-objective because positioning was too important. And then my Elgato does this, and now we're back with different colors. We walk up, we need to be really careful, we have to play max range, we're not allowed to walk in. Fiddle 6 goes in the ultimate, really nicely played. Enemy goes in with big damage, we pop the ult to avoid damage incoming. We get CC'd, we pop the QSS late because we didn't realize it with all the effects on the floor. Yona is dead now. I don't know where Kai is, I don't know where Yasuo currently is. We can see the Elder here, and we can now finish the Elder. Just to be very sure that nothing can go wrong. Because my Elgato is going crazy, as you see. So I'm too busy fixing my Elgato. And I'd rather do Elder while fixing my Elgato. Because I don't have to, like, I don't have to uh, input anything. I can just attack and just, you know, <laughs> fix my thing at the same time. When in, in reality, I could have most likely ended. But it's too much of a risk if my uh, thing just goes on and off. And then you just end up losing because, yeah, uh, that's something you'd really dislike to see. But now we have a big problem again. We are very late for Nasher. And we have to grab it. Yasuo is still in our jungle. And the Nunu can just easily steal this. Fiddlesticks is resetting on vision, by the way. He just reset it on vision so the Nunu knows. Uh, but I will not stay here alone. I'll just buy an item. And now I just buy any item I can for any advantage. Like, it doesn't matter what I just build. Just buy anything because this will be the last fight of the game. This is going to be the last fight of the game. Yona goes in. We pop the ultimate instantly as he tries to assassinate us. 
Now the Amumu is looking like a player here, but the Volleyball is running after him. We just quickly push mid lane. Now we walk after the Amumu. He pops his ultimate. We pop QSS and run after the enemy. Nicely knocked up by my teammate. And now the Nunu is left alone. All the pain and agony he's inflicted upon me is now against him. And he will lose this game. There's no way around and maybe we get to kill him as well. And he dies. So we end the game after killing that guy as well. Making it feel a lot better. And that is it for today's video. You can take a look at the stats at the end. And if you want to support Rift Guides in general or just me, check out Patreon, leave a comment, like the video, boost the algorithm with this. And we'll see each other for more Rift Guides content very soon in another video. See ya.